Hey guys, my name is Chelsea Seaburn. Welcome to The Smart Student. I'm happy you're here because today we're gonna talk about one of the biggest complaints that I receive from college students about academic writing, and that is that their writing doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound smart. Can you relate to that? If you can, let me know in the comment section below. And while you do that, I wanna let you in on a little secret. Did you know that in order to write good academic papers has nothing to do with you being a good writer? In order to sound smart when you're writing a college paper, you do not need to master the topic you're writing about either. Nope, heck no. Good college paper writing is not about being a good writer, it's about knowing how to effectively answer your writing prompt in a logical order that flows. Now, the same stands true whether you're writing a small two to four page paper or you're writing a giant hairy research proposal. So that's exactly what I wanna talk about today is I wanna teach you the basics of how you can make your writing good by making it flow. All right, friends, before I go full nerd into this lesson, I have something for you. So my YouTube channel is dedicated to helping you guys with academic writing, which is great, but this means that you have to piece together a lot of the writing process, which can be confusing. So what I've done is I've created this template that goes over my smart student writing method that you can download for free. If you're wondering where you can find it, simple, it's linked down in the description below and in the comment that I have pinned in the comment section. And don't worry, I've made it all bright and shiny and pretty for you so it's not a total snooze fest. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the lesson portion of this video. First things first, if good academic paper writing is all about making your writing flow, what does that mean? What does it mean to make your writing flow exactly? Well, come with me. Okay. So when you're given a writing assignment, you're given a purpose, and that purpose is what you're supposed to write about. Now, within your assignment, there's always various objectives that you're supposed to meet that help you meet that purpose of your paper. Are you with me so far? So, for example, let's say you're assigned to write a paper about Amazon's marketing plan. Great. That is the purpose of your paper. Within that paper, you have three different objectives you're supposed to meet. For example, you're supposed to write about their marketing mix, you're gonna write about Amazon's target audience, and you're gonna write about their current logistics chain. So to write with flow means that you need to link those objectives together in a logical order that flows so your reader understands the information you're putting out there. Now, beyond that, and this is the part that I think students struggle with the most, is that within your objectives, you need to link all of your thoughts together. So realistically, your paper doesn't just look like your objectives linked together, it's gonna look more along the lines of something like this. Everything in your paper needs to be connected together. The way you link all of your writing together is through the proper use of transitions. Now a transition can either be a word, a phrase, or even a full sentence. The purpose of it is to act as a cue that tells the reader that you're moving on from one point to another. Now, you've probably heard me say this before, but I like to call transitions either thought links or thought bridges because they link your independent thoughts together. Just like my monkey friends here. So, for example, imagine each monkey is its own independent thought. Those arms act as a transition that reaches out and connects one thought to another. Imagine if they didn't have their arms the whole monkey line wouldn't hold. And the same stands true for your paper. If you didn't use transitions, it wouldn't flow. It wouldn't necessarily make sense. This is where you might receive feedback from your professor that says your writing is choppy, abrupt, jumpy, doesn't necessarily make sense. That's because it's missing the glue that holds the writing together. So for example, the way I'm delivering this video to you right now is with flow, meaning that I have a topic, which is to teach you how to make your writing flow, but I'm delivering it to you with various objectives that flow in that logical order that's gonna help you grasp the concept. And aside from that, between each objective, I'm using those thought links so that it flows smoothly from point to point. Let's rewind for a second. DJ, play it back.
I've made it all bright and shiny and pretty for you so it's not a total snooze fest. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the lesson portion of this video. First things first, if good academic paper writing is all about making your writing flow, what does that mean? What does it mean to make your writing flow exactly? Okay, so in that section of the video, there are two completely different objectives that I'm talking about. We'll call them points. The first point that I'm making is that I'm telling you about my free template that you can download. Great. The second point is that I'm officially introducing you to what writing with flow means. Again, great. Did you notice how between those two points, there is a sentence that lets you know that I'm moving on from the first one to the second one. And then beyond that, in front of the second point, I say first things first, which is a cue to you, the viewer, that this is the first bit of information that you need in order to grasp the entire concept, which is the definition of writing with flow. That sentence and that phrase, they act as a guide that help guide you through the information. Now, let's say I didn't use that thought link or I didn't use the transition. How would that sound? DJ, one more time. And don't worry, I've made it all bright and shiny and pretty for you so it's not a total snooze fest. If good academic paper writing is all about making your writing flow, what does that mean? What does it mean to make your writing flow exactly? Could you tell the difference? Imagine if I filmed my entire YouTube videos that way. Chances are you wouldn't stick around and I wouldn't blame you because you'd be lost the entire time. Now, it's a little more aggressive when you watch it in a video like that, but the same thing applies to your college paper writing. When you're writing, you must link the points you're trying to make together, and on top of that, you must link your thoughts within those points together as well. So now what I'd like to do is I would like to go over the different types of transitions, go over a few real examples of using them in sentences, and then I wanna give you a few of my additional best tips for making your writing sound good. Sound good? Okay, so here is a little chart that I made you guys that has all of the different types of transitions. You can find that linked in the description below. But let's go ahead and zoom in on this real quick because I want you to see something. If you'll notice, there's different types of transitions for the different types of situations in your writing. For example, one transition may be an addition to the previous point, or that transition may be there to contradict the previous point. It may be a comparison, you may be listing out points in a sequential order, you may be giving an example of the previous point, and so on. So what I'm trying to say is that the first step in using transitions correctly is first understanding what type of transition you're making. Aside from the type of transition, the second thing you need to consider is the placement of it. And that simply means where you're going to place the transition in your sentence. And honestly, there's no hard or fast rule about what's right here other than transitions can be placed at the beginning, middle, or end. Let me show you an example of the same sentence that uses the three different placements. Pembroke Welsh Corgis are prone to developing hip problems. For example, hip dysplasia is a common health issue that affects overweight corgis. Pembroke Welsh Corgis are prone to developing hip problems. An overweight Corgi, for example, may be affected by hip dysplasia. Pembroke Welsh Corgis are prone to developing hip problems. An overweight Corgi may be affected by hip dysplasia, for example. If you'll notice, those three examples say the exact same thing. The only thing that's different is the placement of the transition. Again, where you place your transitions in your writing, you'll have to use your own discretion, but I will say that the transitions at the beginning of the sentence seems to be the most common. At least it was the most common for me when I wrote college papers. But now let's go ahead and walk through some of those examples so you can see different transitions in action. All right, hello, here we are in my computer. I'm going to zoom in real quick so you can see what I'm talking about here. But I've put together these three sentences to demonstrate three different types of transitions. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first one. This is gonna use a transition that is contradictory, meaning that you have one point and you have a second point, and that second point is contradicting what is said in the first one. So preliminary research supports the hypothesis. However, the latest test results were not conclusive. The transition, however, is appropriate in this scenario because again, point number two is contradicting point number one. 
Now, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is an example. So in this one, Amazon is the most profitable company worldwide. For example, the company's current market capitalization is roughly 1.7 trillion. So this transition is probably the most straightforward example here because it is just demonstrating an example of point number one. But as you can see, again, you have one point you're making and then you have a second point. The difference is simply that in this case, that point number two is an example of number one. Now in this last example, again, we have a point, we have another point. The transition here is letting the reader know that this second point is summarizing what was said in point number one. So corgis are prone to developing health issues later in life. Therefore, it is important that they maintain a healthy diet and regular exercise. In other words, the writer added in this second sentence to demonstrate what they're trying to say with sentence number one. Does that make sense? Now keep in mind, these are just three examples, very simple examples. As I'm sure you've noticed, there's a lot more transitions that can be used, judging by the chart that I made. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on. All right, I hope you enjoyed those examples. Again, don't forget to download the chart from below. But now what I would like to do is talk about some of my favorite additional tips that can help you improve your writing as well. And the first one is that you want to avoid overusing repetitive words and phrases. So for example, one of the biggest mistakes that I see college students making when they're writing papers is that they gravitate towards a word or phrase that they end up using over and over and over again in their paper. And see, here's the thing, if you're trying to take your writing to the next level, repetitive words and phrases are something you want to avoid. Honestly, this is something that'll start to come naturally to you the more you use transitions and are aware of it. But in the meantime, there are two things you can do to fix this problem. So number one, if you're writing your paper and you can feel yourself saying the same thing over and over again, simply pull up a thesaurus because it can help you find something else to use. And then my second tip is that you can also use a thesaurus when you're proofreading and editing your paper. Because sometimes you don't notice you're reusing a word until later when you're reading through your paper. Honestly, if you're new to writing with flow, I actually recommend worrying about the repetitive words and phrases until you're proofreading and editing your paper. Because in the beginning, you really want to focus on getting used to writing with flow and using those transitions. Does that make sense? Now, moving on to my next tip for academic writing, and this one builds on using a thesaurus, and that is, I recommend writing with a thesaurus open. I always had a tab open to a thesaurus when I wrote college papers, and I still use a thesaurus when I'm scripting my YouTube videos or writing intensive work in general. Now, the key is not to try to sound smart by exchanging simple words for complex words, but a thesaurus can be a very effective tool for when you're stuck. So I don't know if you can relate to this, but you know, you read an article, you do your research, and it's like the information is trapped in your head. You know what you want to say, but you don't know how to translate it onto paper. A thesaurus can be great because you can type in a word or two that you know you're trying to say, which can help lead you to exactly what you want to say on your paper. A thesaurus can also help improve your vocabulary by adding variety to it. Again, not complexity, but adding variety to it. Now, my rule of thumb here is that if you find a word in a thesaurus that you wouldn't feel comfortable using in language out loud, don't put it in your paper. If you only know what the word means because you found it in the source, don't put it in your paper. Speaking of vocabulary, I have a vocabulary pro tip for you. So I don't know how many of you can relate to this as well, but who here struggles with spelling and grammar? I was awful at spelling growing up in school, and matter of fact, I'm still not the best at it, but I'm a lot better than I was, and I think I owe it to this one tip right here, and that is, I use the spell checker in Microsoft Word and Google Docs. And by use the spell checker, I don't use the spell checker. Let me explain what I mean. So you know how when you're typing out a sentence and a red squiggly line appears under a word because you spelt it wrong? Well, what I do is I don't use the spell checker to spell it correctly for me. I will retype that word until I spell it correctly on my own. And the same goes for grammar errors, because when you're typing, if you see the blue squiggly line, that means there's a grammar error somewhere in that sentence, or at least your software thinks there is. Again, I will try to figure out the mistake I made on my own without using the system to tell me what I did. 
Now, this takes a little more time, but I promise you this saves you in the long run because for me, it significantly improved my spelling and grammar overall. All right, friends, if you're still here right now, thank you so much for joining me for this entire video. I hope it wasn't a total snooze fest. And while I still have you, don't forget to grab the Ultimate Smart Student Writing Kit down below. And of course, come say hi elsewhere. Come check out my Facebook group, Patreon account, any social media that I'm on. I'd love to have you guys there. And of course, if you haven't said hello down below on this video, be sure to do that. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it with your friends. And of course, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this every week. Thanks, guys.